If you've been spending hours writing DAX formulas, struggling to create perfect visual, or just wished Power BI could read your mind, well, Microsoft just made that last part almost a reality. I'm talking about Power BI Copilot, and it's honestly a game changer. This AI assistant can write measures for you, create entire report pages, answer questions about your data in plain English, and so much more. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Power BI Copilot from setting it up to five practical examples you can use in your reports today. And stick around until the end because I'll show you some limitation you need to be aware of. So if you're interested, keep watching. Hey, before we dive in, can I be real with you just for a second? Creating these tutorials takes a lot of time, researching, testing, recording, editing. But honestly, that has never discouraged me because I remember what it was like struggling to learn Power BI or other BI tools and data analytics related concepts, spending hours on something that should have taken minutes, feeling stuck and frustrated. If these videos have helped you even once, it would mean the world to me if you hit that subscribe button. It's free takes two seconds and it tells YouTube to show these tutorials to more people who needs them. You're not just subscribing to the channel, you're helping someone else who's exactly where you were a few months ago find the answers they're looking for. So if you're in, let's start building something special here together. All right, now since that's out of the way, let's get into the topic. So the big question first, what exactly is Power BI Copilot? Think of it as your AI assistant that lives inside Power BI. It uses the same technology as ChatGPT, but it's specifically trained to understand your data models, your reports, and your Power BI features. You'll file Copilot right here in the Power BI ribbon. And once you click this, it'll ask you to connect to a workspace, and we'll get into that in a while. And once you click that, this panel opens up where you can type questions or requests in plain English. Now, here's what makes it powerful. It can write tax measures and calculations. It creates visuals based on your description. It generates narrative summaries for your data. It suggests report improvements and it can explain existing measures in simple terms. The best part, you don't need to know technical jargons. You just ask questions like you're talking to a colleague. Now, before we jump into examples, let me show you how to set it up. All right, so here's what you need to access Copilot. First, you need a Power BI premium capacity or a fabric capacity. All you have to do is just go to app.powerbi.com and you will see this page. One crucial step that we would need is to create a workspace which is fabric enabled or convert an existing workspace into a fabric enabled workspace, okay? So for now, let's create a new workspace. I'm gonna click on this workspace here and click on new workspace. Let's call this Copilot. Go to advanced and scroll down. And if you see these options disabled, then that means that you do not have fabric capacity and we would not be able to use Copilot with your current license. But if you do see this enabled, select fabric capacity and press on apply and your workspace will be created. Now let's open up a Power BI desktop file and before doing anything else, let's import the data in. I'm using this sample sales data, which I've generated using AI only. And I've got tables for sales, product, customers, and dates, pretty standard stuff, okay? And as always, the link will be in the description where you can download the data and follow along. So let's import the data in. It's in a text CSV format. Now I'm going to show you a few examples which will explain the use of Copilot using this data set. One quick note before we start is that Copilot works best when your data model is well structured with proper relationships and table names that make sense. The clearer your model, the better response you'll get. So I'm going to go to the model view here. And if you see here, the tables are already connected because I named 
the columns appropriately. The only thing which is not connected is this calendar table. I'm going to connect this as well to the sales table here. And I'm going to connect it to the order date column of the sales table. Save. And that's it. We are ready. Now let's jump into the examples of how we can use Copilot. Now that we are ready, let's click on the Copilot button that you see on the top ribbon of your Power BI desktop. This. Now from this pop-up window, you need to select the workspace which is fabric enabled. If you don't see any workspace, that means you don't have access to Copilot. If you do, you will see a list of workspaces. Select the workspace that you want and then press select workspace. Now after this, you will see a section pop out on the right, which is the Copilot window. Click on get started to start using Copilot now. Now for our first example, let's say I want to create a measure that calculates year over year sales growth percentage. Normally, I'd have to write the DAX formula myself, figure out the time intelligence function, make sure I'm handling the date context correctly, and so on. It's not hard, but it takes time. Now watch this. I'm going to type in Copilot, create a measure that shows the year over year percentage change in total sales. And look at that. In just few seconds, Copilot has written the entire DAX formula for me. One key thing to note here is that Copilot doesn't create your measure directly in your semantic model. And that's what it's telling you at the top here. But it does provide you with the steps of how to create a measure and paste this in inside that measure, which is a simple process. So let's do that now. I'm going to copy this measure here and create that into my semantic model. Now let's try one more thing which will highlight one of its key limitations which you just saw. Now I'm going to write format this as a percentage with one decimal place. Again, it has given me the instructions on how to do that, but it's not directly doing it into the semantic model. So this is one of the limitations of Copilot, but this is something that we can easily overcome because it's a simple process and it explains each and every process that you have to do to complete the step required. All right, example number two. Let's have Copilot create a visual for us. I'm starting with a blank page and I want to see which product categories are performing best. So in the Copilot chart window, I'm going to write create a bar chart showing total sales by product category sorted from highest to lowest. Copilot is processing this and look at this. It's not just creating the visual. It's actually giving me some details about the visual as well. It's saying, okay, your report page is done. Here's the outline. Title is total sales by product category. Key metrics is total sales. And the visual is a bar chart using category sum of net revenue. And if you look at the visual, the chart is perfectly formatted with all the data labels. It has also went ahead and added a card at the top which shows you total sales value, giving it a finished and polished look. Now let me show you a limitation similar to the previous example. I'm going to format this chart by changing the bar color. And similar to before, it's saying I can help you with data and visual structure, but the customizing the color of each series in a bar chart must be done within Power BI Desktop or Power BI Services. Here's how you can do it. And then it provides you with the step. So which means it does not directly assign the desired colors to it or format the chart. Example three is a cool one. Asking Copilot to generate insights from your data. 
Let's say I've built this sales dashboard, but I want to create a narrative summary that I can include in the executive report. I'll ask Copilot, summarize the key insights from this sales data, focusing on strengths and standout performance. Copilot is analyzing the data and writing a full narrative summary. It's identifying that electronics is the top performing category, generating the highest sales, which is significantly more than furnitures and office supplies. It continues to tell you about furniture, which is the second best category. And at the end, it says that no time-based trends or patterns can be identified from the available data as the visual do not provide a breakdown over time. So, which means when you're creating your narrative, ensure that your visualization captures whatever possible dimensions that you have in your data. Because right now we are only capturing total sales by product category. But if we add few more charts, which have a trend line in it, the narrative can also capture that. Now, similar to earlier limitation, if I ask it to insert a text box and place it inside the canvas, it will again give us the same output saying that it cannot directly do that. And it shows you the steps which needs to be followed to perform that action. For example, four, let's see how Copilot can help design report pages. I've got this basic page with a few visuals, but it's not very polished. I'm going to ask suggest improvements for this report page layout and design. Copilot comes back with several recommendations. It's suggesting a total of 10 points. Like for example, add a clear title and subtitle, use slices, and it's also giving specific advices like ensure visuals are sized and spaced appropriately, avoid clutters and making the report easy to read. Now let me ask it something specific. What visual would work best to show sales trends over time? And it's recommending a line chart with date hierarchy and explaining why line charts are effective to show continuous date over time. This kind of guidance is gold, especially if you're newer to data visualization best practices. Now I can always ask it to create those visuals on the canvas like we did for the other visuals by simply typing in what we wanted to create and giving specific instructions like the time granularity, which is quarterly, monthly or yearly and any breakdowns that we want to include. The fifth example is super helpful if you inherited someone else's Power BI report or you're looking at complex tags you wrote months ago and can't remember what it does. I've got this measure called YOI percentage change in total sales. So I'm going to ask Copilot to explain this measure to me and look at the explanation. Copilot breaks down exactly what this measure does in plain English. The YOI percentage change in total sales measures calculate the percentage difference in total sales between current year and previous year. This metric helps you quickly assess whether your sales are growing or declining year over year. And then it's also explaining how it works. Now, this is an incredible learning tool because you can use Copilot to understand advanced tasks and then apply those patterns or techniques onto your own work or projects. So now let's use whatever we have learned so far to create a full dashboard using just prompts. Okay. Now when you open Copilot by default, it gives you a couple of suggestions, which you see at the top here, create a new report, suggest content for a new report page or answer question about the data. Now let's try create a new report page. Now it's saying that I can create a new report page for you to tailor the page for your needs. Could you specify main focus or objective? So in response, I'll write, I want to analyze sales performance and customer trends. Now it's asking for a specific time period. You could specify a time period or ask it to use the entire data. And instantly it creates your entire page, including top cards and individual charts depicting each and every metric. Now let's try something else. Instead of using the suggestion box above, I'm going to write, create a sales performance dashboard. That's it. Just one single prompt. And because our data model is already structured, it will create an entire sales performance dashboard for you. Now let's try one last thing in the suggestion box above. I'm going to click on the second option, which is suggest content for a new report page. 
In response, it is suggesting few outlines for the report. I'm going to choose customer segmentation analysis. And within few seconds, it has created an entire report for me focusing on customer segmentation. All right, before we wrap up, let me share some important tips and limitation you need to know about. Tips for getting better results. First, be specific in your request. Instead of saying create a sales chart, say create a column chart showing monthly sales for 2024 with data labels. Second, use proper table and column names in your data model. Copilot relies on these names to understand your data structure. Third, you can have a conversation with Copilot. If the first result isn't perfect, ask it to refine or modify. Treat it like you're talking to a colleague. Fourth, review the DAX formulas it generates. Copilot is good, but it's not perfect. Make sure the logic matches what you actually need. Now for the limitation. Copilot requires premium or fabric capacity. It works best with well-structured data model. If your model is messy, you will get inconsistent results. Complex calculations might not always be accurate on the first try. You might need to refine your request or manually adjust the formula. Copilot can't fix fundamental data quality issues. If your source data is bad, Copilot can't magically fix that. And last, it's using AI, which means responses can vary. The same question asked twice might give slightly different answers. And that's everything you need to know to start using Power BI Copilot in 2025. This tool is honestly changing the way I build repos. What used to take 30 minutes of writing DAX and formatting visuals now takes 5 minutes with Copilot doing the heavy lifting. So here's my question for you. What Power BI features are you most excited to try? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this helpful, then please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.